So I'm going to put these into context by applying some of the effects that we've looked at into this piece of music or this loop that I'm working on in particular. I've now reassigned the actual effects themselves, so the auto filter, the hybrid reverb, and the echo, I've now put as return tracks, purely because I want to bring them in as something that happens suddenly during a section and then disappears again. I don't want it to happen as a constant, so I'm not going to apply it to the actual track directly itself. I want to be able to have that flexibility to bring it in or out, and I'm going to use automation to do this. So I have this melodic group here, and remember that I really liked the auto filter which is C, return track C, which means it will be the third of these sends here. So I'm going to literally just draw in really quick breakpoints, double clicking, and bring them in for the duration of this region that I've got looped, and then bring them back out again. So I'm going to keep them pretty straight on. So they're happening straight away there, and they're dipping straight out immediately with the breakpoints at the end of this four bar section. I also want to add some hybrid reverb, which I have nestled down here in return track D. Return track D corresponds with the last or the fourth send here of this group that I want to send to. So I'm going to click on that and it should automatically show me automation, which it does. I can see this red line hovering here. Creating some breakpoints, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I want them to be really harshly appearing during this section and then disappearing again. And I'll change shortly, once I've had a listen back, I can change how extreme this is. This is quite high up in how much reverb is being applied, but we'll see as we audition it. So let's have a listen to this. I'm just going to solo this group for now so we can just hear the differences. So I definitely want to make the hybrid reverb much more obvious. And it's having a huge jump in volume as well. So I'm actually going to turn the dry wet up in the return track so that it's much more prominent when it kicks in. And I'm going to turn this blend towards the shimmer. I want more shimmer than I do convolution. I'm also going to change the EQ because I want it to affect something a bit higher. Let's wait till it loops back around. There we go. Exaggerate these higher frequency ranges and maybe even apply a little bit of this vintage lower bit depth effect. So I check out this auto filter, which is swinging back and forth using LFO, but it has this nice cut out kind of vibe to it, very stop start. I quite like the rhythmic element of this. It breaks it up a bit from the rest of it. Over on my kit, I've also applied a filter, which I will definitely, definitely automate. I'm gonna automate the frequency, I want this to move. But I wanna do this manually, so I'm going to right click on the dial, show automation, show me it there and I'm just going to create a gentle slope so it starts from very low frequencies and opens up gradually over this section. We can see it moving nicely up there. I think I might increase the resonance so it's a bit more obvious and it cuts through a little bit better when it's in the lower frequency range. So I like what's going on in this section. I also, if we remember, have some saxophone with the echo on it. I quite like the depth of what's happening with the saxophone itself, but I think I might try and bring the stereo down a little bit just so it doesn't feel so removed from the rest of the actual track's environment. I like it as an effect though, very much. Might put a little bit more modulation on the delay of that. And I might actually change. I'm gonna do some ping pong on this. I'd like the saxophone to bounce between my ears. Definitely going to make the rate a bit higher for that if it's going to bounce around. I don't want it quite so hectic. Yeah, I like that. 
gives a bit more room so it's not feeding back and it's not occurring quite as rapidly as it was before. So we can start to see that creative effects can really start to bring some parts to life. If I go back and listen to what was going on before them, even though the beat is still very much squashed by the filter, if I bring this back out, this has temporarily disabled the automation as well. We can hear that this was, I really like this idea, but it's a bit of a game changer when we start to apply creative effects and start to create some better virtual imaging and things come to life and have a lot more atmosphere to them. And also a bit more of a playful quality. I'll re-enable that automation just by right clicking. It also starts to open up options to me to have different sections and just have some different movement and structural qualities to this piece as I start to develop it.